Some men are tricked into believing that they are the fathers of babies that another man sired. They are purposely misled by their girlfriends or wives that they would never cheat on them, although some of these children bear them no resemblance. Other unsuspecting men are listed as the fathers on birth certificates for children they never created or met, just so the mother can get public assistance. The term for doing any of these behaviors is what is known as paternity fraud. Unfortunately, it is the men who get locked away when the women commit this fraud. Even if a DNA test proved, as Maury said, you are not the father. A man's hard-earned wages in these cases are garnished in order to illegally pay the mother for children she knows are not his. From the time the child is a newborn up to its 18th birthday, he can expect to pay one-third of his salary for child support, although he may never get to see the child he is helping to raise. You know, Kanye West said it best in his hit song featuring Jamie Foxx, and I quote, 18 years, 18 years, and on the 18th birthday, he found out it wasn't his, end quote. The sad fact of the matter is that some women have no qualms and use their own children as pawns in a governmental pursuit of games of child support, alimony, and divorce. Welcome to this edition of Paternity Fraud. Dads by default. So what is paternity fraud? Paternity fraud is a term used when a woman falsely chooses a man knowingly and designates him as the biological father of her child, even though he is not. And normally when these situations occur, it is a financially motivated just as a song with Kanye West states. Now the target man does not have to be a millionaire. Don't fool yourself. Just a man who is capable of making the monthly payments in, in deference to his own life until the child's 18th birthday. The child support system is, uh, the way it is governed at this particular point in history, is no more than an illegal redistribution of income and wealth from a man to the perceived mother of his child with the tacit support of the government, of no matter which country, not just the United States. Now, the definition of redistribution of income and wealth is the transfer of income and wealth, including physical property, from some individuals to others by means of social mechanisms such as taxation, welfare, public services, monetary policies, confiscation, divorce, or tort law. The term typically refers to a redistribution of an economy-wide basis rather than between the selected individuals, which is exactly why only the state can support a wrong such of this magnitude. And it's just ridiculous. But since we are talking about false paternity in this case, one would wonder how these ladies get away with such a, a theft undetected. The current statistics of those men that have their DNA sampled by a reputable lab indicate that one-third, ladies and gentlemen, one-third of the labs that perform paternity tests have a negative result on the test, which means the men are not the father. Of all the possible fathers who take paternity tests, about 32% are not the biological father. 32%. This means that if a man is not witty enough to detect that the assumed mother of his child is lying to him or uh, not stuck with the bill until the child is 18 years old. But is there any recourse in the law once a man finds out that he has been uh, duped, fooled, made a fool of? A short answer? No. Unfortunately, there are currently no consequences for mothers who commit paternity fraud, at least not any that any court or judge would be willing to enforce. Paternity fraud is not considered a punishable crime, and it is extremely difficult to collect or recollect funds from a mother who purposely faked the fatherhood in question, even if she's just using that money for the mall or buying clothes for herself instead of for the child. Now, oddly enough, there may not be consequences for a mother who faked a paternity case to profit herself, but there is punishment for a man who tries to fake his way out of a paternity case. Let me give you an example. When doing an at-home test, a father may commit paternity fraud by swabbing someone else's cheek, like his male friend, and submitting that man's DNA as if it were his own. Now, there's recourse for that. Now, this will throw off the test because his friend will not match the DNA of the respective child. Now, doing this is about as devious or as nasty as a woman faking a man is a father or by placing a man's name on a birth certificate, 
when he isn't the father after all. Now, punishment for one and forgiveness for the other doesn't make any sense. Now, even if the man up front knows that he is not the potential father, he can be penalized by not taking a court-ordered DNA test anyway. Since paternity tests can be court-ordered, refusing to submit to such tests is considered a criminal offense under the law. The alleged father will be held in contempt of court until he submits to requested testing. He can lose his driver's license. He can lose his business license and livelihood. Now, this can lead to criminal charges being filed against a man, and he may also be fined on top of all of that. But there are some rare instances in which a woman who tries to deceive the court gets arrested as well. She gets her to do justice. Now, in a recent criminal matter, a mother in Liverpool, England, was convicted of fraud for faking a DNA test to fool an ex-lover into thinking that he was the father of her child. <laughs> Wonder wonders, right? At court... She claimed justification that she had wanted her child to have a father figure. The man had paid towards the child's upkeep as a result of the deception for quite some time. The woman was sentenced to 12 months in jail. 12 months. Now, too bad this did not happen over here. Now, this type of case usually comes before the civil courts following a, a torturous claim for deceit. So it was under deceit. Now, when an aggravated father usually seeks to recover damages for payments made towards the child's upkeep, and compensation for the distress caused by the revelation that the child they had raised and believed to be their own was not, in fact, even related to them. That's devious. That's bad. That sucks. So, let us get into the statistics on women who commit paternity fraud. Paternity fraud is very common in the United States and around the world, not just this country. Now, the results showed three out of every ten men tested was found not to be the biological father. There are about 300,000 DNA paternity testing cases uh, analyzed, and roughly 100,000 men were deemed not to be the father. It's important to note that the DNA results submitted for this study were legal DNA testing results. No peace of mind DNA test results were made as part of the study, which uh, peace of mind is no more than a DNA test that a man orders in, in order to prove he is not the father of the child. Now, in another study by the International Journal of Epidemiology and Health, in a wider survey, one out of every 25 men worldwide will raise another man's child and not know it. And that's not even adopted or you take the guy's child in. Now, these are some of the more recent statistics regarding paternity cases of men not being a biological father of that father, child. Excuse me. But there is hope for men that are tired of the elite illegality dedicating upwards of one-third of their paycheck for 18 years to a child that's not theirs. There are some states that are bending to the will of these complaints of innocent men who are following draconian rules of taking care of, of the shortage of women and most liberated time in history, ladies and gentlemen, to take care of their children. Uh, take, for example, the Lone Star State of Texas, USA. After six years of three congressional sessions, Texas legislators have changed a law that previously prohibited male victims of paternity fraud from challenging child support obligations. Texas is way ahead of this. So according to Texas law, if a man is married and a child is born during the marriage, that man is legally the child's father. That's good. Now, an unmarried man can also establish paternity by signing a formal contract and has four years to challenge paternity before it becomes permanent. That's good. Now, in either case, no genetic test is required to establish paternity. So situations inevitably arise where a man is legally the father of a child who is not biologically his father. Now, under old Texas law, he is bound to support that child financially and has no course of action to terminate the parent-child relationship if he is the victim of paternity fraud. Now, the new law allows men to use the results of a genetic test or DNA to prove that that uh, child is not theirs and petition the state of Texas, of course, to terminate the parent-child relationship and child support payments in total. And the courts will now be required to terminate the relationship in a test uh, confirms no genetic connection between the child presumed father and the child. So a lot of guys probably going to move to Texas, right? Now the law states that men who discover they are victims of paternity fraud after September 1, 2012 will have one year from the time of discovery to petition the courts. The new law does not protect adoptive fathers or fathers of children conceived via artificial insemination. Now, in addition, the new law only terminates child support payments and does require the state to pay back any support already paid at the time of the petition. 
not before. And here is yet another uh, positive win over false paternity from Britain. The Guardian newspaper reported back in November of 2005 that the child support agency has had to refund hundreds of thousands of pounds, which is their dollars, in maintenance payments to more than 3,000 men after DNA tests revealed that they had been wrongfully named by the mother in paternity suits. That's a shocker. Now, one in six men who took a DNA test to challenge claims by women that they were not the fathers of their children were cleared by the results. This was according to official figures disclosed by the agency under CSA rules. Men must start paying maintenance uh, the moment they are named by the mother as the father of the child. They can challenge the ruling by asking for a DNA test but have to pay for the, the test themselves. Now, figures released by the agency after a Freedom of Information uh, Act request revealed that since 1998, 3,034 men have been found to have been falsely accused by a woman of being the father of 15,909 children who have been taken, uh, I mean, of tests who have been taken that one out of five men were not the father. The CSA has not recovered money from any of the mothers. Refunds to the wrongfully accused men have come from taxpayers instead. Now, commercial uh, charge is 495 pounds for the father if he wants to take DNA tests. Fathers who are clear to the paternity receive a refund for the DNA test and all maintenance they are paid. But with good news on the child support home front, we have some nightmare stories. Now, take the case of Carnell Alexandra. He was a Michigan man who was held responsible for $30,000 of missed child support payments for a child that the DNA test proved was not his. To recount Alexandra's predicament, in the late 1980s, an ex-girlfriend listed him as a father of her child in order to receive welfare benefits. She didn't realize that by doing so, she opened up a paternity case against Alexander immediately. Now, in 1991, while driving, Alexander was pulled over and informed that there was a warrant out for his arrest for the missed alimony, I mean, missed child uh, paternity uh, payments. Now, Alexander, who was never served notice about the money he owed because it was sent while he was incarcerated, was eventually able to track down the woman, got a DNA test, and he proved that he was not the father, and he even got the woman to recant this as much. Now, the judge still didn't take care and still didn't care any about the order. Now, Alexander, he still wanted to pay child support. On a positive note, after 26 years of this case hanging over his head, an attorney stepped forward out of nowhere and agreed to carry his state pro bono to the Federal Court of Appeals. Now, once the local court found out about this, they dropped the case against him immediately and released him from the total amount due. So I guess you got to go higher if you want recourse. Now, let's look at some of the many ways women accuse men of false paternity. There are numerous ways in which paternity fraud can be committed. Once a father signs a paternity acknowledgement form and a statute of limitations for paternity expires, he is required to provide support for that child until the child reaches 18, even if later turns out the child isn't his. So you don't want to sign it until you find out for sure. Now, a mother can also easily commit paternity fraud when applying for welfare. She simply needs to list a father's name and last known address. She could provide a fake address so that uh, when the man will not be notified, by the court and he won't be able to show up to court on time. It's happened before. Now in that case, a default judgment is handed down and he is on the hook for the child support payments. Now while it is staggeringly easy to commit paternity fraud, proving you are the victim is extremely difficult. Many, many states have even declared that DNA tests alone are enough to vacate a paternity order. Well, I wonder why. Now proving fraud requires proving that the mother knew you were not the father, that she told you that you weren't the father, and that you signed acknowledgement based on her statement. Now, gathering all of that evidence is a tall task, particularly if the mother is not cooperative. In a lot of these cases, she is not, because she's in it for the money. Your money, state money, it doesn't matter. Now, once the most aggressive group working to combat paternity fraud is the nonprofit organization Women Against Paternity Fraud. So if you need help, contact Women Against Paternity Fraud. The group is calling for federal law declaring that no paternity finding is final until a DNA test proves the identity of the biological father. Now, in some extreme cases of paternity fraud, women pick you out because they know you work away from home over great distances and in great periods, like soldiers, oil workers, that sort of thing. 
Now take this next case out of the Philippines, for example, where a baccalaureate regional trial court judge has annulled the marriage of a negrince couple after a DNA test showed that the child born to the wife was not the biological offspring of the husband who works abroad. The family court judge ruled that the marriage of the couple whose names are being withheld by the court for on request was null and void. This is good. Now due to fraud committed by the wife in getting her overseas worker husband to marry her, now properties acquired during the marriage are awarded in favor of the husband, not the wife. Now this is what the judge said. In his decision, the judge also declared that since the overseas worker is not the biological, much less the legitimate father child of the woman, the civil Register is ordered to change the surname on the child's mother's back to the maiden name on the birth certificate and remove the name of the plaintiff off any other documents. Now the complaint said he was working as an electronics engineer in the United Arab Emirates and on his return to the Philippines in 2001, his girlfriend of 10 years with whom he had sex with showed him a pregnancy test results showing that she was pregnant. So I guess automatically he assumed she would be the father, right? Now, a woman wouldn't lie, would she? On receiving the news, he was overjoyed and offered to marry her immediately. Shortly after, he went to Saudi Arabia to work, and his wife gave birth to a baby girl in the same year. The birth of the child only five months after the marriage puzzled him. But his wife told him that the baby was born prematurely, so he believed her, which a lot of men do in his cases. But the husband told the court he discovered that the medical records of the child showed that she was not delivered prematurely. <laughs> Wonder of wonders, right? Now, contrary to what he assumed, but had reached a full term of pregnancy, which was about nine months, not five months. And it means that the child was already four months when her, uh, she said that she was pregnant. Now, that is not deception, is it? So, he married the woman. The defendant concealed to him the fact that she was pregnant by another man at the time of the marriage, which constitutes fraud. So you can get women in cases like this, it's just straight up fraud. And a legal ground for annulment of the marriage, which he told the court. Now Judge Drillin, in declaring the marriage null and void, said, this is one marriage would fail because of the deceit and concealment by the wife regarding the paternity of the child, which she delivered after the marriage. And there is no question that the defendant's spouse was impregnated by a man other than her husband. And she made her husband believe that he was the father. Just like on Maury, you are not you the father in many, the... many cases. Now the strongest and most positive proof that he is not the father of the child is the results of the DNA testing administered on the mother during the case. Now the DNA test results show that there are no matches that would indicate that he is the father of the child. The judge pointed out. The law proves that concealing by the wife of the fact that at the time of the marriage she was pregnant by a man other than her husband constitutes fraud of Article 46 Family Code. Now, in closing, we present for you our last case in which a stockbroker refused to take a uh, false paternity land down. He wasn't going to go for it. He was a smarter man. This particular stockbroker sued his ex-lover for lying about the child's paternity. His lover, a secretary, was accused of deceiving a wealthy stockbroker into believing he was the father of her son, admitted to lying to him about one night stand. So she had a one night stand, it was another man's baby, as usual. Then a man who can only be named as Mr. A, for legal reasons, is suing his former girlfriend in the high court for more than 100,000 pounds in damages. He says her false representation led to his being significantly out of pocket after paying for the boy's private school fees and maintenance. Now Mr. A, who is in his 60s from uh, North London, is also claiming compensation for emotional hurt of believing he was a father when he was not. Now when his former girlfriend, named only as Miss B, found out she was pregnant, she told him the baby was his even though she knew there was a 25% chance the father was a real lead the child of another man. She knew it. Now, although Miss A's suspicions were aroused after an episode of East Enders, where the storyline was about disputed paternity, she continued to assure him the baby was his. Wonder of wonders, right? Now, from the witness box, Miss Miss B 
told the court she was ashamed of the drunken one-night stand that led to her becoming pregnant in the late 1996. She said, it was not characteristic of me. She says, I don't normally behave like this, and I haven't done it since, and I wouldn't do it again. Now, Ms. B in her uh, 40s told the court she had met the man in a pub near her flat, and they had gone to a party where they committed uh, into drinking and having a good time. Afterwards, they went back to her flat and had sex. He did not stay the night, and she had never seen him since. So this woman wanted to put somebody on the hook for money to raise their child. The relationship between Mr. A and Miss B was a turbulent one, the court heard. She had stopped taking the pill because she said <clears throat> there was no point as their sexual relationship was intimate, but later she said they had sex during that month. So she couldn't even get her own story straight. Now, in a lot of these cases, the women have sex with multiple men. You don't even have to go on a Maury show to see this. Now, during that particular month, Mr. A, she said, and I had sex on a number of occasions. So, no, I don't agree with the uh, case. She admitted she had a nagging doubt about her son's maternity, but told the court, I blocked it out of my mind such a degree that it didn't seem like it was a possibility. It doesn't matter. It was still true. Now, Mr. Baker asked her if she had lied when she told Mr. A that she was not seeing anyone else after he asked if uh, that was a father blowing somebody else. She replied, no, because I wasn't seeing anyone else. But it doesn't matter whether she was or not. I caution any man, any man, from this day on, take a paternity test. Go to the courts and claim that you are not the father, which would make them have to issue you a paternity uh, test. And there can be some back and forth between you and the mother. But if you have any doubt, if you don't take that test, and in most cases, if you don't contest it after 300 days, you are the father, whether you live in the home or not. Whether you dated this girl or married to this girl, it does not make a difference. Look out for yourself and prevent paternity fraud. For the Men's Channel, this is Charles Rivers. Thank you for joining us. Watch your back.